Good evening again, and good morning to those watching from Hamilton. Yesterday was day seven of COP26 in Glasgow, and the theme was nature. And today, because it was the weekend, uh, some of our delegates went and did some cultural experiences around Scotland, which we'll get to a little bit later. Um, we have a little bit of a longer program for you today, so I'm gonna be brief. We had uh, a great session that was attended by one of our delegates on urban informality and equality, a call for justice. And we spoke to somebody on nature-based solutions. Um, and then you'll see me a little bit later in the program. Um, I was able to interview somebody from the whiskey industry and um, how that's becoming more sustainable. So we'll let you get to that and we'll see you tomorrow for day eight of COP26. Greetings from Glasgow and today I'm just going to talk a little bit about a really important subject that runs through the entire conference and it's the first event I went to and it's Urban Informality and Equality, A Call for Justice. And what we're looking at here is all the informal communities and all the cities across the world. And this was an event put on by Cities Alliance with IIED and the local government, Commonwealth Forum, and several other academic and practical organizations. And it began with the mayor of Freetown. And she gave a very simple story that the agricultural workers, if they get hit by climate, they, can't, they cannot have enough, uh, they don't have enough background or enough support to survive climate failure of one crop. And so if they have two crop failures, that immediately makes them leave and go to cities, this migration. And then they go to the informal communities. In Freetown, it's a hillside community. And what do they do there? They start chopping the wood of the forests because they need something. They've got no tenure, no land, no hopes of any home. And so there's this vicious cycle of injustice within the climate issues that carries on and it grows bigger and bigger and how do we actually deal with this and this is what this event was talking about it had people there from local government it had voices of the slum dwellers international they had the speaker from Uego, which is the inform women of informal communities they had the academics and this was why it was so fascinating it was the practical and the academic researchers all coming together because unless they all work together and come up with solutions we are going to have as a globe as a world even more problems during this coming time so climate justice look at this listen to this throughout the entire COP26 it is perhaps one of the most important issues of all yeah. here at COP26 the Green Action Trust and um, Nature Scott have installed here to promote nature-based solutions to our climate crisis We've got real life examples of different types of biomes from the highlands of Scotland all the way down to the sea, the beaches of the area. Each of these biomes represents a nature based solution which can really help to ameliorate the effects of climate change and our climate emissions. A great example is peatland. Peatland not only absorbs more and sequesters more CO2 than trees, it also is a great mechanism for slowing down water. And that helps solve flooding problems down the street. This moss can hold 99 times its own weight in water and it can really help to slow down the water going through the system, which creates so much economic and emotional and societal hassle downstream. Yeah, well, thank you very much for having me and Thanks chatting on. No problem at all. So I think the first thing to mention is that Scotland is one of the most beautiful places in the world. And particularly, and I might be biased, but the Highlands of Scotland truly are the most beautiful part of the world. And at Tamatin, we're 315 metres above sea level in the heart of the Scottish Highlands. And we have a community there. We're the last distillery in Scotland to provide housing to our workforce. So, for the community, for the people, for the region, and for the industry, sustainability and having an eye on the future is so important. I think it's interesting when we talk about whiskey, we always talk about casks that were laid down 10, 20, 30 years ago. 
but we also have to have that view for what's going to happen in 10, 20, 30 years in the future. And Tomatin is um, one of the greenest distilleries in Scotland in a variety of ways. Um, some of the things we've done, we were the first distillery in Scotland to install a biomass boiler. And what that means is that 80% of our energy comes from low emission biomass, another 20% comes from low carbon LPG. And what that does is it's completely removed our kind of reliance on coal or on oil and, and moving to a more sustainable way of making whiskey. Another side of things is water. You know, the road's getting warmer and uh, water is getting scarcer and we've got to be aware of that. So in 2019 we put a new water weir in and that means that we're preventing ourselves from over abstraction and we're only taking the amount of water that we actually need. And another, it works throughout the whole business, but the majority of our company vehicles are electric vehicles now. Uh, the vast, vast, vast majority of our packaging is recyclable. The only thing that isn't is the capsule on our 36 year old. But we're looking into that. And I think that's the thing that the whiskey industry has been doing a great job of. This is not just to add in the, the, one distillery can't change the Scotch whiskey's output, but the whole industry is working on this together. Um, we talked about it earlier tonight that Scotch whiskey it competes at the shelf level, but on every other aspect, it is the most um, friendly, helpful industry in the world. So, uh, whenever I go to a show, I'm with friends from other distilleries. The, the industry is built on trading casks back and forth, and we trade knowledge back and forth. And when other distilleries want to look for sustainable ways of making whiskey, they come and ask us about our biomass boiler. We, uh, we go to other distilleries to find out little bits about what we can do. So, another thing we've done effluent which is the, the water that comes out of our uh, distillery after we've processed it uh, it used to be spread to land to make uh, better growing land but we now have installed a system of reed beds at the distillery which will essentially create a wonderful a lot of biodiversity a lot of uh, flora and fauna in the region um, so there's so so much that can be done and there's so so much that has been done um, and, and that's just scratching the surface but i think uh, as you said, Scotland's one of its main industries is Scotch whisky. There's around about 150 distilleries, and it's a population of only about 6 million people. If, if Scotch whisky can do well for the environment, that's a great thing for Scotland and, and the world. Yeah. Thank you so much for your time. No problem at all. Thank you. Slangeva. Cheers, guys.